Okay, so here we are in the lab with Ranji, and we are going to show you. I know that you guys have been in here at this other lab with Ashley's group, but we're going to show you the part that we're doing, which is actually testing the um, Raman microscope, you know, the portable one, as well as we'll show you the commercial grade one first. So, I'm just grab this and we'll the other one. Oops. Oops. So, if you want to follow us, we'll just come around to the other side first and then we'll show you how this works. So right now we're going into the um, into the lab where the laser is, where the where the commercial grade. Um, we need the black curtain to record the spectra. This has to be totally black out. So today the spectra, the room light can have an uh, effect on spectra. So as we go in here, this is the um, Raman. Microscope, Renishaw. I want to take a picture of this, show what it is. Okay. And what's actually happening is this is working with laser. This is inside. And laser coming from that hole here and go this way and go up and then go to the microscope and then go down to the sample right there under the objective. Then the signal come back go this way, go through the filter, go through the slit, and there's the slit, and this says it's a grating inside. Um, you can see it grating inside. Oh, then it disperses the light, um, go into the detector right here. And then we'll be read, we can read this information from the, onto the computer. We, we run all this through the computer. Should we get a sample or just explain what's going on with this? Uh, we can get a sample if you like or we can. Yeah, you have uh, some in there, right? We have uh, some, do we we have some for the fingerprints that we did today? We have, we have, we have, we have selected. Okay. We can open up a spectrum. Okay. And we can open up the spectrum to see. Now what actually happens is that every single piece of material has some type of fingerprint on it, and, and this is what this is detecting. As, as the laser light is, is hitting you know, into the microscope about um, whatever this small, small, minute particle it is, it actually is hitting and reading it, and as it does, it's, it's forming a fingerprint, and we're looking at the spectrum fingerprint of the different objects. Um, and Essentially, what this lab is doing is they just received a five-year grant to do a database library of different types of E. coli and bacteria so that we can, they can utilize this in the different pharmacies, um, in doctor's offices. Yeah, so. we build up a library of different strains of bacteria, different species. We build maybe 30, 40 different types of bacteria. We build up a big library, and then if we encounter, a, uh, if, if you go to hospital, somebody coming with sickness, and then that person may have a, some kind of infection from a bacteria, then we take a sample, and we process the sample, and we separate the bacterium, and we put on the chip, and then we take a spectrum, then we take that spectrum, and run the calculation, and put it in the library, and run the co uh, computer program, and to see, uh, or to, uh, it will check us, uh, check it for us uh, what the bacterium uh, is uh, uh, by uh, comparing against the light. And now one of the beauties of this is that when everybody has gone to the doctor's office before and the doctor has said, oh, I'm not really sure whether it's a bacteria or a virus, so try this, and they give you something and they don't even have the culture made up for 24 hours. Well, this will tell us immediately, so they won't be second guessing in the doctor's office. They'll just just be able to look through this and be able to know what it is, so that they know how to treat it. Yeah, right. That's the typical typical uh, nature of a spectra fingerprint of a bacterium that uh, that we collect. That's pretty robust spectrum uh, to work with, and. Um, 
So this is a new technique that go against the PCR technique that exists today as a gold standard. Uh, this is a commercial instrument, but this is very heavy. This is about 200 pounds. But this is not easy to carry to a hospital or pharmacist or any other place that you would like to make bring. Therefore, we uh, started making a portable version uh, that is not heavy, we easy to operate, can be around by any person. Not as uh, sensitive. Uh, as uh, it can, be, it can done, It can do everything that this instrument can can uh, can do, and that's what we are building on the other side of the uh, inside the lab, and we'll go and show you that aspect. Okay. Yeah. So is it We're on again. So now we're going over to the other part of the lab, which it has the portable round the portable round and microscope. And the beauty of this is that it's so much less, it's so much lighter. Um, it actually will get sealed up, so that it's portable. It has handles that you could bring it to the doctor's office. Less expensive, lighter, user friendly. Even can, I can do we it. We can lift it. It's not heavy. And it's it's not as sensitive because the laser is. If you notice on the first one, the laser is going bounce and back and forth in this. And this is only the only thing we're worried about right here is between here and then going into the machine here. So because this fiber optics is actually taking over all of that different um, sensitivity that the the laser is doing in the other side, it actually is going to be a lot easier or. Safer, not as sensitive. Easier to, ha easier to handle. Uh, Non-technical person can do the, all the job that yes. needs to be done. Um, uh, so it is not very sensitive to uh, environmental changes like temperature, uh, humidity, uh, a light condition, uh, as 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 does the other uh, instrument. This is pretty robust uh, in that sense. Uh, it's it's, it's a very compact, lightweight instrument. So um, what I've been doing with the lab is because I'm, do I'm not really versed in working with bacteria and things like that, so that I've been using different materials such as my white powders and I've been testing it from one lab with the, with the commercial grade over to this lab and we were actually be we were testing and we we're in the process of actually comparing them. Um, the two different things. So I've used cornstarch and baking soda and baking powder and I've done it with both labs so that we are going to be looking at the results of those things. So. That's, that's about it. That's, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda.